Yeah. It, it's, it's nice to have the, the, the situation reversed. So we're here at the Opiongo Senior Center and we have a new enterprise in town. Well, it's, it's fairly new. I just found out about it this winter. I was at uh, Afelski Shoes getting some footwear and I saw one of these newspapers sitting on his table when I was trying on shoes and I thought, well, that's a new business. I didn't even know that we had another news organization in Barry's Bay. So uh, we had a chance to meet during an announcement recently. I think we, we have a, a, probably a picture of it there someplace mm -hmm. uh, when we're announcing the federal funding for the Pog Lake Road. Uh, uh, that'll help people with their taxes uh, not going up as much by having the government subsidize some of that very important work that we're doing. So I'm here today with Danielle Paul, the editor and publisher of the Madawaska Valley Current. And you might want to take a look at one, uh, what it looks like. And that's what I saw on Mr. Elfalski's table that day. So uh, how long have you been in business, Danielle? We actually launched January of 2018. Oh, so I've been, I haven't seen this in over a year then. Well, we're, we're primarily an online newspaper. Okay. But we do this monthly um, selection of articles because we recognize that in the Valley not everyone has um, uh, an internet service or perhaps not the skills or the knowledge and confidence to go online. There are a lot of people who do like paper. Yes. Yeah. So I, this started back in January of 2018. Why did you start this up? We, we have lived here full time since 2011, 2010, when we moved back from the UK. I've always been involved in the, the valley and my family was here. Mm -hmm. But um, we spotted there was a niche for a kind of different kind of reporting. Um, and for several years we've been down to one local newspaper. Um, and so we thought, you know, you need to be asking questions and providing uh, more of a voice. Okay. Um, so were you from the valley originally before my, you went? My family has connections here okay. uh, and my parents retired here in the 60s. Right. So, so uh, everyone wants to know more about their, their neighbors. What would be the, the family line that, you know, the last name of the people who came here originally? Yeah, my, my, my uh, maiden name is Bonna. My dad was Leo Bonna mm -hmm. um, and was on the hospital board, etc. cetera, when he, when he retired here, as was my husband when he first moved here. Um, but my family is, uh, is originally from Fort Colunge and then Oh gosh, no, I'm the genealogist. So I'm you know back to 1907. <laughs> Sorry, oh, okay. that's not good. <laughs> 1907 is fine. There are okay. probably and people still who the, remember those yeah, days. Yeah, the folks in Barry's Bay would probably know less Bonna and more uh, my maternal grandmother because um, my dad was raised by the Dwyers of okay. Eagle, and Dwyer, as you know, is a valley name. Very valley name. So, yeah, yeah, that's okay. the connection. So you saw this niche because we had one publication, which is actually good, okay, for a, a small community. Plus, they even have a radio station. Well, since then, we, yeah, we now have Moose, which is terrific. Yeah, um, and in, in times of uh, the, the different uh, weather events that we have, like the tornadoes, it, my FM, it, or no, pardon me, the Moose radio has been the place in, in Barry's Bay for people to listen into to know where to go for the emergency services. Absolutely. So uh, with uh, your, your newspaper, you decided that you wanted to have more variety and a different perspective uh, of reporting. How did it, it actually come to pass? And where do people get prescriptions? Do you take ads? How did this all come together? Okay, yes. Well, when we were doing our research, um, we realized, because we looked at, you know, what was in the market already. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we also formed a very, very sort of um, central uh, opinion about how we were gonna do this. We're operating essentially as a nonprofit. We, we felt there's enough online news there that's free 
that people shouldn't have to pay subscriptions. Um, so people can go to our website, get the news free, and the print versions we do free. Um, and on that basis, because we believe that you know people should be able to access community news easily and without cost, um, you know we bankrolled it to start with, and then when we saw there was some some um, interest and support, quite enthusiastic support as it happened, um, we we looked at local businesses, and they and we carry local advertising. I mean, we don't do the thing online where you have Google ads about. You can imagine. <laughs> so, uh, so it's all local. Okay, so you and your idea. husband bankrolled in the beginning, and, and mm -hmm. you, you started the the business. To, are you able to print locally as well? It's all printed locally. The designers locally. The photography is done locally. It's it's um, very much homegrown. So if it, if it's just you and your husband, or do you have more people to cover stories? We're really really lucky. We we had a group of people who along with us saw there was a niche for this kind of media, the, the kind of speaks truth to power kind of media, just sort of asking the odd question and, mm -hmm. and digging underneath the surface a bit. Um, and so we really have a volunteer core of writers, uh, of photographers, and people who are just generally interested, um, who will either feed us story ideas or sit down and write for us, some regular columnists, and we have occasional uh, contributors, and we're very grateful for them. And so they're all volunteering their time. At, at this point, we're hoping to get, we're, we're trying to get to the point where the local advertising support um, will enable us to do, you know, modest honorariums, that kind of thing. We're not getting any profit out of this, um, but we love to grow to the point where we can have an intern, students, actually employ people. And one day, maybe we will. Well, maybe next year you can apply for Canada summer jobs. I would love to do that. Yeah. That would be a great opportunity. We have some good links with the high school, and some of the uh, some of the uh, students are are sending us some photographs and stories on a regular basis. So I'm I'm hoping there'll be some budding journalists there. Well, the uh, high schools have a co-op program, as does Algonquin College, and there may be people who are going to school there who live in Barry's Bay. Mm -hmm. Do you cover uh, the Madawaska Valley Council meetings? Yes, we do. We do. Um, we attend as many of those meetings as we can um, and listen to the recordings of the meetings that we can't get to. And so how do you distribute the hard copy of the Madawaska Current? Um, yeah, because it's available in quite a, a, a broad area. Um, we actually send them by post to uh, address in Whitney and Maynooth and, and uh, Killaloo. Uh, Individually? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, not, well, to, they're not in, in, people don't sign up for an individual subscription. This would be to, like to a public space. Okay. Like, to for example, a, right. a library or mm -hmm. a Felskis. Um, we we drive around uh, locally, and we also have um, uh, um, some assistants, um, you know, some, some folks who actually deliver for us. If someone's going to Wilmo, they'll mm -hmm. take a. So oh, that's. Um, uh, Friendly, green friendly then, uh, not making special trips, or just uh, utilizing the people who are going someplace anyhow. So how many people do you think the hard copy reaches? Well, we started out printing between three and 500. I think the first one was 500 and then we cut it back. Uh, and now we're up around 900 and I think because they're in waiting rooms, or places like the senior center here. Um, they're read by a lot of people. Like the, the standard seems to be 2.1 people in a household will read a, a community newspaper. I think we're higher than that. When I go around to, to uh, the hairdressing salons or whatever, they're pretty, 
pretty mangled by the time I see them. They've been through lots of hands. So what about your online version? Uh, it, is there a way for you to track uh, who is actually reading your issue? Mm -hmm. no? yes. How do you do yeah. that? We use Google Analytics um, and they have formulas to, to calculate how many people. We can actually see real time who is reading what article right now. Um, and we can also um, look at statistics in terms of, of who reads over a period of time and what articles are more popular. So is it mostly people from the Barry's Bay and greater region or where would you say people who are looking at the, the local news are coming from, well, reading that, it from? That was a real shock to us. When we launched, we thought it would be just Barry's Bay, the few volunteers and friends who knew that we were doing this. Um, and we discovered in January of 2018, we had readers all across the southern United States and in Central and South America. Um, and we realized they're snowbirds. There are people who are interested in the valley, who've gone away either for the whole winter or for a break. Um, and then we started thinking quite seriously about this whole seasonal resident thing and we looked into the Google Analytics. We discovered that our readership is high in, in the Valley and in Pembroke, but also in Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, Kitchener-Waterloo, Vancouver, the places where people will come back to the Valley for their summer residence. Okay, so it's a way for the snowbirds to keep track of what's happening uh, back at home and, and people in university or people who've gone away and they just, they, they want to keep in touch. That's right. That's well, that's right. very interesting. So we've got the current here and how can people uh, obtain, uh, well, you said that it wasn't a subscription. What types of places can they actually go to if they're in the area? and uh, we'll want to know what the website address is as well. Right, okay. Um, the, the, uh, the, the print copy is, is available in shops and, and libraries locally. So in Barry's Bay, here at the Senior Center at Bayberry Design where the printing's done, uh, Madawaska Valley Public Library, the um, Madawaska Coffee, the Legion, um, it's on the reading programs at Water Tower Lodge and at Valley Manor, in Wilno at the Tavern and the Craft Gallery. Oh, so in, we do in, cover in, uh, in, Wilno in, and in, what yep, about Killaloo? In Cumber at Killaloo, Grandma's Pantry, in the library, Obi Chaos, the CRC, um, the Community Resource Center, um, Guard's Kitchen. Oh. You know, it's in a variety of places. And of course, in Cumbermere, the, the restaurant, the laundromat. Um, museum. And do you cover uh, news items uh, going the other way on Highway 60, Whitney, Madawaska? Occasionally. We've been out to, to a few things in South Algonquin. We're kind of limited uh, in terms of how much we cover and we've tried not to, um, well we've tried to, to contain it to, to what we're confident about, about uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, covering well. So quality is very important. Uh, so now it, we know how we can get a, a copy of the actual print version. Mm -hmm. Where do we find you online? Madvalleycurrent.com. Valleycurrent.com. Madvalleycurrent.com. So next time you're uh, on your phone or your computer, check it out. Some very interesting stories. And you might find something about someone in your family being highlighted. You know, monthly do you do this? or? Uh, we upload stories all the time. Oh, so it, it is current then. Yes, it is current. Yeah, and there are actually family stories in there too about businesses and at least once a month a heritage photo. Oh. So those genealogists who love to know about old times know where to look. Very good. Now we're here at the Opiongo Senior Center and I know you're volunteering for an art class. So uh, I, I'm seeing a couple people trickle in. Perhaps we should uh, say goodbye now and, and give you a chance to go onto the internet and look up the madvalleycurrent.com.